several of you seem to be having problems working with SAS and I'm not sure if it's not installing correctly or if you don't need to know what to do with it when you get it. Now you don't need to install a lot. You do need to have SAS installed and you can check that. The first thing you'll have to do is install Ruby and you can check to see if Ruby is installed by doing Ruby v no ruby slash version or I could always go look this up because I don't actually remember the code so when I go to sass and to install you will have to start by installing Ruby. And you can check to see, yeah, it should have just been sass-v. So you'll go to, to the Ruby installer, and you can use the most current one. You'll go to the download area, get the most current one, 64-bit version if you're in a 64-bit version. You'll click on it. and I'm in Windows. This is easier on the Mac. You don't have to install Ruby. Ruby becomes by default. So you can run it. I do have it installed, but reinstalling it shouldn't be an issue. Accept the license. And I'm going to add everything. I'm hoping that will involve, uh, avoid a problem with installing SAS, though I, I did a fix on that one and I have the link to it in the directions in Canvas. So I'm going to hit finish here. And then I should be able to go to my command prompt. And I forgot the hyphen V. But Ruby is how you install SAS. SAS. SAS is a Ruby gem. That's a plugin is what they call them. So your next step, once you've installed it, is to type gem install SAS. I'm sort of still sort of stuck here. Let me try opening that again. So if you can do gem install sass, it'll take a minute. If this gives you an error, then the Ruby installation didn't work. and it's successfully installed. And you can test to make sure it's installed. You can type SAS V, that should give us our version. Looks good. And if that's installed, then the next thing I should have to do is go into brackets, and I already have it installed, but The, pl the plugin you're going to need is bracket sass. And that's it. If you've got those, you're good to go. Then we get into the actual development with sass. Now I've created a sass demo folder and I've pointed to that. And I've created an index.html page. I just wanted to give myself some things to style. Um, let's get some colors. This is just easy. Let's see, it's Valentine's Day. Let's do 
or it's Valentine's Day week. Let's do gray and pink. Oh, it's just giving me the contour, the colors. It's not giving me the whole palette. That's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Gray and pink. And then it gives me these colors. So I'm going to just use these when I'm creating my variables. So let me show you the workflow on this. And I'm going to try and keep it pretty simple. I'm going to show you two parts of SAS. You're supposed to do three. I don't want you to be able to do an exact copy. You still know to out, need to go out to Linda and do some includes or something. But I can put this in here so you can see my code. And I can see my colors when I want them. All right. So I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to save it as styles.scss. And it's critically important that you don't have a .sass file or a .css file created. And that creates all of them. So it's blank. But I can go in here and I can start adding things. And I'm going to start adding variables. And so I could name these things what they're named down here, dark primary color, primary color, light primary color, but I'm going to call them um, dark gray And I want background which is not quite white. And I want pink And I want text. And so that is are my variables for colors. You can do variables for all sorts of things, variables for things that you can put into style. So like you could have a standard border 2px px solid and we'll use the divider color and since I'm not going to use it anywhere else I don't need to save it as a color bd 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 so those are some of my variables now I really like the nesting so I'm going to go into a vertical split here and open up my index page so I can see what I have in here. So I've got a container. So I'm going to do dot container because that's my personal class. And inside the container, I have a header. And in the header, I have an H1. Now, I'm actually getting a little carried away with the nesting because this is not actually necessary because I only have one H1 on the page. But it, it will show you that this works really well. And so I'm going to make color pink font size 1.4 M. Now I could do the font family there, but I think I actually want to do the font family for the whole container sans serif. And I, for my header, I want to do a text align center. And then in my header, but not inside the H1, I also have nav. And I could put this here, or I could, I could, it's a little unnecessary to go to that nav level since I only have one nav. So I can just do 
nav here. And in the nav, I could put in a background color. of dark gray. I can do anchor text decoration none color pink in here I could do an A hover and have color white. We'll just keep it simple. I'm just mixing things up here. So I've got nesting, I've got variables. Um, my container, I would typically also do max width. 960 px border this is where I'm going to use my standard border min height 500 px margin 10 px auto and let's try saving this now if there was an error it would alert it. Let me put in an error. Now, when you're using the, if it's correctly installed, if you have an error, it will show you here. And you'll have to fix it before it will convert it to the SCSS, or from the SCSS to CSS. Now here, the mapping, I don't need to worry about this. I never really look at it. You need it, but don't touch it. This is where you make your edits. This is what they translate into. So I have container, container header, container header H1, background, text decoration of none. Oh, that's a typo. Look at that. So I can go back to my styles.scss. It does not catch all of the errors. And if I have it linking properly, I need to make sure that I'm linking up in my head section here. And you link to the CSS page, not the SCSS page. And then I should be able to see it. And this is what I'm expecting for your practice. One plus one more thing, do an import or something else. <clears throat> My pink is not working. I know I used the pink somewhere. But the CSS is working, so let me see what's wrong with my pink. So I have my pink. H1 color should be pink. Yeah, maybe I copied the pink color wrong. Oh, it is. It's wrong. That's a gray. So it's. So it was doing exactly what I tell, told it. I just saved it. That refreshed it. While it's not a beautiful page, the container desperately needs padding. I now have a web page that's demonstrating my SCSS, my SAS code. And so I create the SAS code as an SCSS file. And then, still giving me a timeout. I'm not going to worry about that one because it did correct it, create it correctly. You'll know it's working if it's giving you your SCSS, and you should see the comments where it's mapping from so you can see which line these are coming from. And you want to leave those comments in place, typically. 
And so that's the process that I have of working with SAS.